we should right so we are live so give it just a few minutes and then i'll start asking you some questions so okay, okay. um hold on a second all right okay we're ready okay james so the first question i wanted you to answer if anyone because obviously i know you from clubhouse and there might be a lot of people in my community that would not have known who you are so i want you to big yourself up and tell people who you are basically and where you're okay, coming from okay <laughs> so um yeah, so my name is James Burt. Thank you for having me on, first and foremost. I love a podcast, obviously. So I love being on a podcast. Nothing I like more than the sound of my own voice, as my mother used to tell me as a child, and she was right. Um, I have uh, run various businesses over the years. I've had a couple um, that have been tragic failures. I've had a couple that have done all right, and I am most well known for launching 161 podcasts. We've launched, me and my team have now launched more podcasts than anyone else in Europe, including this very podcast, The Apprenticeship Godmother. Uh, one of our very loved shows that we look after as an agency. Um, my background was I worked with Nando's, Thomas Cook, Nissan, BMW, all them sort of big brands about 16 years ago. And I got into the world of broadcast PR. I just didn't know what broadcast PR was, but I just loved it. I fell in love with audio, fell in love with the power of what audio can do for your brand and your business. And um, yeah, I launched my first podcast in 2017. The day that I launched, I had no mailing list no brand. I didn't know what brand I, I knew what branding was because that was my background, but I didn't have a personal brand, I'd say. I had some mates on Facebook and that was about it. And in 2017, I learned everything you could learn about podcasting. I learned the SEO, the back end stuff, the boring bits and pieces. And I sort of bolted on the PR -y bits. And uh, the day I launched, Tim Ferriss, the famous author, was number one. Gary Vee was number three. And I was sat in between them like the meat of an influencer sandwich at number two <laughs> with no with no mailing list, no marketing, no nothing. And that podcast stayed in the top 20 for about eight months. Oh my God, that's massive. Yeah, so, well, it, well, it is. It is. So, like for me, okay, so the like audio is massive for me because I'm like a lot of people who have got several businesses so for me like to be and and my, the most important thing for me is my family life do you know what I mean that's like top comes over everything so me I like to do things at the same time so like if I'm cooking I listen to podcasts if I go for a walk I listen to podcasts for salon owners I mean like from how, how do you think that would benefit them as in if that do you reckon doing a podcast audio because uh, most salon owners are on Facebook okay at the moment mm -hmm. um why do you think a podcast would be a, and what could they talk about do you know what I mean that's probably the questions that I have for you and how can that change their business well I think there's there's two, a two pronged attack with podcasts I think first and foremost it's one of the best ways to educate yourself. You could do all that subconscious learning, you know, instead of when you're driving to the salon and back every day, forget Heart FM and listening to Jamie and Harriet or whatever their flipping names are. God knows that Heart FM and the global radio group don't need any more of your advertising money. Start to educate yourself. So when you're sat in that traffic jam on the way to and from work and you're stressing out, at least be educating yourself. Put some amazing content in your ears. You know, like th this show, for example, really practical, tactical advice. You learn something, you could go and deploy it into your business that same day. Amazing. Um, and it's free. You know, there's all this amazing, there's hours and hours and hours, millions of hours worth of this amazing content for free. You can learn about marketing, about sales, about personal development, about relationships, leadership, management. There's, there's, there's a podcast for every niche. I would say first and foremost, start using it as a tool. Exactly like you said, I listen to it when I'm out for a walk, when I'm in the gym, when I'm doing the cooking, when I'm doing the washing, when I do when I'm putting you know, doing the ironing. I mean, my wife keeps me very busy with a variety of chores, as you can tell. So I've got a lot of time to listen to content. But all that downtime that would normally honestly, Sunday night, I absolutely love it. Sunday night, I do the ironing for the yeah. family i like shine my little boy's shoes for school oh, I love I you already. my dad used to do it for me so i like doing it i don't know why because i used to go and watch him do my shoes in the garage for whatever reason um and so but i now listen to podcasts at the same time so those chores that my wife's like, oh, i hate them like, i love the ironing because yeah. i'm it's, it's like a lesson it's like learning yeah. um yeah. so that's that's the first thing secondly from from a business perspective um, and one of our mutual friends, Matt Wilson, talks about this all the time. He's someone who you should definitely get on your podcast, by the way. But he talks about yeah. there's a trust timer in the mind of your consumer. So, yeah. and the great thing about podcasting is it's long form. So if this conversation goes on for 15, 20, 30 minutes, then that trust timer is going off for people. They're thinking, God, Sarah really knows her stuff. She's asking great questions. God, she knows her. She, I'm going to go and find out more information about her. They're bought into you before they buy from you. 
because people yeah. buy from people they have to they have to buy into you before they'll buy from you. And the same thing if somebody's listening going, oh, I want to do a podcast. Some people are going to like me. Some people are going to flipping hate me. I'm all right with either way. I prefer you to like me, frankly. Um, but then people will come and transact with me. But for, for a salon owner's perspective, your prospective clients can get to know you really, really well. You know, you mm. could do a podcast about, about your salon. You know, the story, stories from the chair, stories from your salon, you know, the amazing things that you hear about. And again, a lot of people might be like, well, you know, I've got a, I've got a, a salon in Chiselhurst. What's relevant about that? What about the amazing people in Chiselhurst? The stories yeah. that you hear from those people. What about, you know, you've onboarded um, a brand new member of your team. So young Sally's come straight out of um, apprenticeship college, and now all of a sudden she's learning self confidence. You could you could interview them about you know what they're learning. There's loads of ways that you could do it, and it just builds that authority. It's amazing if you want to be the go to thought leader in your space. It's a, it's an amazing tool, and don't forget as a salon owner. Not only are you the person who is cutting the hair potentially, but you're an operator, you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner, and it might be very, very beneficial, especially if you're building that business to potentially exit or to sell or whatever, because you know, maybe that's your sort of like leverage plan further down the line. Building up that expert authority while you're running a business is amazingly powerful. So I'd say number one, listen to them to educate yourselves. And number two, um, use them as a tool to leverage your expert positioning, become like the thought leader in your space or central to your community. I think salons are the hubs of towns and villages and cities. And, and I think if you did a podcast about that, I'm, I'm actually, um, should I say about it? Yeah, I'm going to say about yeah. it. So, yeah. so we're looking at world exclusive guys. I'm, I'm looking at running a, a new platform for localized podcasts. Cause I think that's the next generation of podcasts. And I yeah. think that, the estate agent, the mm. salon, um, the coffee shop, the pub, um, the little greengrocers. I'm just thinking of like my little town where I live. They could be central to running this podcast that's about the hub of the community, but makes mm. them the authority figure in that space. Now, if you're somebody who listens to the Chiselhurst, What's On in Chiselhurst podcast, which is brought to you by XYZ Salon, I think you're much more likely to go in there and be like, I listened to your podcast this week. It's brilliant. Yeah. I can't. I yeah. can't believe that Janine's, um, you know, uh, put a petition in to get the swans back to the pond or whatever. That's the weird stuff that happens in my little town. Um, but I think it'd be mega powerful, mega powerful for people. Oh, you know what, James? I totally agree with you because when I did my um, Facebook um, group back in the um, pandemic, I only had forty salons, and by within two months, because I was just going on about the, all I was doing was sharing my thoughts about what was happening because we were closed down and I did give them loads of information like the bounce back loans I gave them loads of information about um, the grants that were available but really the main part of that podcast was me just sharing how I was feeling and you know what it, it, it went from 40 to 800 in two months which was massive and I could not believe that do you know what I mean so like my, my podcast now that's that's probably my goal because I'm enjoying doing it because it's just sharing what's happening and what I've done and my life as such. Do you know what I mean? And the people that are around me. So I totally agree with you. And I think that's doing small little businesses. That would be, I think if you're a, if you're in a salon at the moment and you're struggling to get people through the door, it just gives you that edge. I really, really do think so. Yeah. Because hundred percent. And, and, it, and again, you can make it not about just, you know, if you're sitting there as a salon owner going, well, yeah, but what would I talk about? Like how interested of the general public going to be about salons? Yeah. Maybe they won't be. So maybe you do make it a bit more generalized. So it's like content stuff that you're hearing in the salon. Maybe it is about, you know, about the local town and you make yeah. yourselves like the hub of, of the town, but equally, uh, and, and you, you alluded to it there, Sarah, brilliantly, you know, 40 salons yeah. at the start of, the pandemic you've got 800 within two months mm. and although you're going on you said all i was doing is talk about how i was feeling those people in, in their minds are you're now the authority yeah. podcast gives you so much leverage you know, anyone can flip a camera and go selfie mode on facebook anyone could do an instagram story god knows i love an instagram story if you follow me you'll know um but podcasting because it is that little bit more difficult to do like you know there's not many people in your space who've got a podcast and now you're the you're the expert yeah. you're the authority figure and again for salon owners who are going yeah, but do I need to be an authority figure? Yes, I think you do as an entrepreneur and a business owner, because I believe, I honestly believe you've got two jobs these days. You've got the thing that you do, you're the doer of the stuff. 
And then yeah. you are your own PR agent. You need to be PR in the hell out of yourself. I did like a TV appearance on the weekend. Did it do anything in terms of like driving lots of traffic to the website? Probably not. But from a leveraged expert positioning, now people are like, oh, that guy's on TV. So he must know what he's talking about. That might not transact into sales or direct bottom line revenue for six 12, 18 months, yeah. but it will further down the line if you use it in the right way. And again, if like say, if you're a salon and you're not getting the amount of people through the door or how many salons, how many, how many salons are like on the same street as a competitor? What's mm. a way to stand out? Something like yeah. a podcast could really, you know, cause everyone's doing the same Facebook ads. Everyone's doing the same TikTok stuff, yeah. but they're not it, all doing a podcast. I, I do. I actually think myself because I, the amount of Facebook, I mean, Salon owners are on Facebook. A lot of their clients are on Instagram because it's hair. Do you know what I mean? So they take old beauty. So they pick, take pictures of their treatments. But for me to walk into a salon, I need to have that. It's a scary thing to go in for the first time and have your hair done because, or have beauty treatments because you don't know those people. And like I was just chatting to you yesterday because I went to a spa yesterday and I'd said to you, the girl spoke all the way through. Do you know what I mean? Which really put off my treatment but by educating clients of what they're going to get when they come into your salon as in and your and also and the other thing that i've done which has really helped is i let get my sales team and my marketing team to listen to my podcasts so that so it's another way of teaching them what i know do you know what i mean so it, it yeah it, 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 i've it, got it, go on I've, I've got a mate, sorry to talk over you. I've got a mate of mine, um, a guy called James Sinclair. He runs a very big business out in Essex. He's got about a um, thousand staff, 14 brands. Yeah. He does about 20 to 30 million quid a year. He does very, very well. A very, very seriously astute operator. And he said that one of the biggest benefits, because I launched his podcast with him in 2019, and he's getting yeah. 15, 20,000 downloads a month now. He's getting you know loads of leads. Like He's, he's got like a low ticket. Um, sort of offering for people to learn more business skills from him because he just doesn't like doing group coaching. So he's like, just go and do that um, and, and I'll help you out sort of thing. He said more than driving leads for that product and that course, he said the biggest benefit has actually been recruitment. Yeah. Because people listen to the podcast, they know what he stands for and mm. then they want to work with him. And not only is it recruitment for um which which is massive, you know. He's had so many people like, oh, you know, people literally emailing going, "I've listened to the podcast. Can I come and work with you?" And he's the sort of person he's like, "I'm always recruiting, even if yeah. I haven't got a job space. If I find an amazing person, I'll find them a role in the business. We will make something fit because that's how businesses evolve and grow." But the other thing that he's got um, through YouTube and his podcast, and the two are sort of linked together, is that he's buying a lot of businesses. He's buying six right now. But oh everyone, but, and all of those leads, here's the interesting thing. All of those leads have come into him direct right. to his inbox saying, Jimbo, we're looking to sell up. Yeah. Can we have a conversation? But people right. know in advance through his podcast and his YouTube that he yeah. buys businesses in a creative way. He's not going to pay you. If your business is worth a million quid, he's not going to lump up a million quid up front. He might in a, in a very rare instance, but what he'll probably do is saying creative. So he'll give you some money. And then yeah. there'll be like a buyout, or there'll be an earn yeah. out, or there'll be a vendor financing, you buy with a commercial property. So people know, like, and trust him already. They've already bought into him. So when those deals come to him, they come across the line, they already know it's going to be a creative deal. They already know that they're not going to get like the whole lot up front. And they already know that if there's a commercial property linked to that, that business, he's 100% only going to buy the business if he can buy the property as well. He, so like I say, and he's now got six on the bounce at the moment. They, he's spinning those plates to get them through. And they've all come inward from the podcast it's mad that, that is that's mind-blowing really because yeah. like like for me i don't know like we had the conversation didn't we so emc last year which any, anyone that's listening to this you need to get to that it's absolutely fantastic I've, i'm actually taking my team this year i've got four of them coming oh are you? yeah yeah and i've got my son's coming who is my business development manager and bobby who is um he's another business development well, he's a trainee business development manager okay so he's just training then i've got lewis who is my office manager but um and also my compliance he he does all the quality but he he does all like all the website he's in charge of making sure all that works and now i'm bringing my marketing go abby with me so that they're, they're a young team as well so it'll be really interesting i mean they're, i think the the business it just shows you the different types of people because my business development manager is like oh 
he's like races like party bobby's party whereas lewis and abby are more like back office do you know what i mean doing all their stuff so it'll be interesting to see but if if they come to that you're there as well aren't you and we had the conversation at emc but being fair i built that relationship with you guys for listening to on clubhouse on an audio app which the a podcast i i i know clubhouse is clubhouse but the podcast can go to anybody and anyone can get access to it. So once people know about you, they can let you listen to you. And I think even I'm finding myself when I'm getting leads coming through, a lot of them have been coming from people that have listened to the podcast. Mm. I'm, they contacted me through Facebook. I'm giving them the podcast to listen to first. Do you know what I mean? As in when I say they contact me through Facebook, because I people know what I do, more often than not, they'll they will um tag me in it and then I will send them the podcast for them to listen to. So then they that qualifies them as such. Yeah, great so idea. They, you know what I mean? When they come to me, they know me already and there's that because like you said, there's that trust bucket, you know, that like and trust for somebody. They need to know that you know your stuff, I think, when they're it's buying a, off you. It's it's a really good way to do it, actually. It, it's the sort of thing, and again, as a business owner. Uh, whether you are, you know, the salon operator or you run a little group of salons or you're looking to expand or you're looking to, and again, it's another be beautiful thing. If you're uh, maybe looking to expand your mini empire within your town and there's other businesses, you know, again, to stand out from the crowd as a, as a, as an expert and authority figure, a podcast is an amazing way for people to come and come and transact with you and build up that know, like, and trust. But exactly as you said there to you, they're cold traffic, but you're yeah. not cold to them because they already know you. They already like, I get it. A lot I do consultancy for brands. I don't do it very often, but mainly for high net worths who have like maybe just exited. I've weirdly ended up in this weird niche where they've exited a business and they're looking for their next thing. And yeah. it's kind of a hybrid between um, sort of a bit of basic coaching of like, right, okay, what are you going to, what's the next offering going to be? And then actually getting the brand out of them. And that costs 1500 quid plus fat for the day. I get people yeah. regularly who are like, I've listened to your podcast, can I pay for the session? Yeah. Sure yeah. you can. Uh, yeah. A mate of mine, Will Polston, who's a coach, again, another guy over in Essex, really, really well respected coach, got, got a brand called Make It Happen. And we launched two podcasts for him. And he said that he's got more people on his top tier product, which I think is like two grand for a day or the mastermind is like you know, five figures plus, And they come through his podcast. Yeah. Because, yeah. He, because they, he's already built up every single week. 30 to 45 minutes over a month. They spent two hours in your company. They know, like, and trust you because or else they wouldn't be there in the first place. This is the thing that people get wrong as well. People think about the, you know, the podcast it matters how many, how many numbers you've got, how many listeners. It's not about any of that stuff at all. Obviously, if you're the BBC and your remit is to get to as many people as possible, you need that to happen. But I would rather have a hundred people listening who are the right people than have a million people who are the wrong people. It's not only that, but you know, when people come on, they get opportunities. They can leverage your black book of contacts. So somebody comes on as a guest. Now, yeah. they, now they're getting your reach and yeah. almost like your brand value and your brand equity because you've bought, like, for example, like I don't know any of the people that are going to listen to this podcast. Most likely there might be a few in there randomly who've listened to Clubhouse or something, but the vast yeah. majority are not going to know me. But yeah. they now already, oh, this guy knows his stuff. How do you know I know yeah. his stuff? Because yeah. Sarah said, and we trust yeah. Sarah. So you can leverage that as well. There's so many benefits to it but that but like you said there that whole thing of leads coming into you that trust timer or the trust bucket is so key and it's just a good way of you know what other medium do you get 30 minutes of somebody's attention totally other, like no yeah. <laughs> never ever and ever. You know, like I for me it was just a bit of a no-brainer when I spoke to you and you went Sarah you, the words that you said to me were which I will remember because it was that important was if you've got a niche um, at which most salon owners do because they're, they'll either specialize in some kind of thing. So they might specialize in, I don't know if it's hair, it could be blondes, it could be Afro, it could be a different type of cut, a different type of color. If they can then share that by talking about it to other people and how they do it, then they become a specialist in that area and then they get more traffic because more people come. But, or if they were to talk about a certain way of their salon, how they trained, you know what I mean? All of that, all their yeah. stuff. And one thing that's really like piqued my um, 
my thing and I know a lot of salon owners who would be listening to this would say is recruitment because it's something everyone's struggling with at the moment massively do you know what I mean getting good people to come um and I think if they if if you were somebody thinking oh I want to get into the industry and I don't know how and you were talking about what you do in your salon I think there would be definitely a lot of people that would go actually I want to work for that salon owner because do you know what I mean? She knows what she's talking about. So I want to be trained by her. And that's a really good thing for us. Do you know what I mean? Because it then it, that person's more likely to stay with the whole of their training because it fits in with their ethos and their culture and everything else that goes along with that. So really, thank you, James. That's there's, really there's so the, the other benefits you get, and these are like the intangible stuff that people don't even think about with podcasts. So, for example, yeah. a lot of opportunities that, that I've had come because you have to make the opportunity. So what yeah. a lot of people will think is that, you know, I'll oh, start a podcast, I'll talk about my niche, and then eventually I'll get so many listeners that The Rock will want to come and appear on it. Or, you know, I'll just get Holly Willoughby. Or I mean, don't touch Holly Willoughby at the moment. She's getting well, cancelled, isn't she? I know, I know, I know. Bless it. her up. Um, but, but that's what people think is going to happen, but that's often not the case. But, for example, we've done, and again, this is sort of like a combination of like Clubhouse, podcast, all the rest of it. We've actually ended up being the, becoming the broadcast partner. My podcast agency is the broadcast partner to this year's um business show they got thirty thousand people through the doors at excel it normally yeah. costs thousands tens of thousands of pounds to be an exhibitor it's costing me not a penny because Is i've that... leveraged because of clubhouse we're gonna do clubhouse live from there we can record yeah. it as a podcast from there i've said yeah. that all of their all of their headline speakers can come on as a guest on my on my podcast in advance yeah. i've they've actually got a content section that they're doing so then i'll talk about giving me a headline slot on that and this is the other thing right because of the expert positioning what you could do if you're clever about it this sort of feeds back into the recruitment thing i've got a guy who sat one floor down from me now who is super overqualified to work for our agency right. super overqualified he is flipping fantastic oh he's actually gonna have to listen to this damn yes! it <laughs> Sam, I'll take you back. Well, Sam, when you edit this podcast, I'll take you back. I'm joking. I think you're terrible. Don't ask me for a pay rise. Um, but, Sam, but Sam came to work with me because he saw me speak on stage at an event. But the speaking on stage at an event thing came up because the person putting on the event was a guest on my podcast. Right. Okay. So inadvertently, the podcast, I did the podcast with a guy called, um, called, um, flipping forgotten his name, whatever, it doesn't matter. He owns a station called Podcast Radio. So they literally, they've got a digital radio station that plays podcasts. It's well weird. It's brilliant though. Um, he came onto my podcast. He was then doing a live event, asked me to go and help again, do a broadcast um, sort of contribution with him, did. Asked me to do a, a panel with um, Spotify and somebody else. So I did it. Sam then is in the audience and sees me talk, comes up to me after. He's like, oh, I love what you're talking about. I love what you're, you're up to. Goes away. I'm then recruiting two weeks later, I put a message out, I put a uh, advert out on LinkedIn. He sees it and DMs me and says, Hey, Hi. you know, I met you a couple of weeks ago. I'd love to come and have a conversation. And I've, Hi. and I've looked, he, he owned a podcast agency at the time. He still does stuff like on the side. He's got, a, he's got a real niche around sort of like narrative storytelling podcast. He's, he's amazing at it. Again, Sam, don't ask me for a podcast. I think you're actually <laughs> terrible. So don't even try it. Um, edit this out. Don't. Um, but, but then he he said, well, look, I completely bought into your vision. I would rather be a small piece of a of a bigger puzzle than a big piece of my own puzzle. He said, I hate doing the sales and marketing stuff. I just like editing audio. I just love yeah. editing audio. That's what I want to do. And then between him seeing me on stage, he listens to some of my podcasts. So again, yeah. it builds up that no like, and trust. So he's now 100%. He could, he could go and walk into, I don't know why I'm doing this. He's going to leave me. Don't leave me, Sam. He could walk into any... <laughs> He could walk into any podcast production agency. He could walk into any audio agency in this country. Yeah. Any, yeah. he could be getting three times the salary that he's getting, but he knows that we're building something exciting and he's an integral part of what we're building. Yeah. And, and I think, well, I think culture and how you are as a team, it doesn't matter. You know, I, I've got people working for me currently at the moment and they'll probably listen to this and leave me now. No, they won't. That's my, that's a limited belief. <laughs> Put that away. But they, but being fair, they they could earn. They're, they're that good. They could earn a lot more than there. But they like the fact that we've grown and they have an interest. Like you say, that they're part of that. If you see what I mean, yeah. and that and they can see that. And people don't just go to work for money. I think I think this is a real. 
um, thing in people's head that it's got to be salary and it isn't because I've worked I've had good uh, you know I walked away from a really quite a, a well-paid job to start my business because I was unhappy do you know what I mean and actually took a pay cut because I was unhappy because actually if you go to work every single day and you hate what you do what's the point do you know what I mean yeah. that's so I think yeah oh no I, I really love the podcast so James if somebody was thinking about starting a podcast or wanted to do it what would you suggest to them i mean you i've worked with you and i'll promote you all the time because um you get so much help from james so like even you, you could this could set up all their social media for the week basically couldn't they so tell yeah. tell tell the audience how that works and how that's, you help. that's a, a lovely little advert thank you very much i'm going to play you your own fancy jingle here she is she's my <laughs> she's my apprenticeship godmother um yeah. so yeah, what I would say is start with the end in mind. What are you actually doing this podcast for? Get really clear on that. If you don't know what the outcome is, don't start it. Uh, and I'm dead serious about that. And people think, you know, I get asked all the time, should everybody have a podcast? Categorically not. If you haven't got a, a, an audience that you want to speak to, you haven't got a core message that's going to add value to that audience, don't bother doing it. If you're just doing it because it's a me too thing, like, oh, such and such age um, salon's got one, so I better do one. It's the wrong reason to start. So start with the end in mind. And then my second piece of advice would be get start now and get perfect later. You know, yeah. you probably won't like the sound of your voice to start with. You'll probably be like, oh, I sound horrible. But there's an actual reason for that. You say, I sound different. Well, you do sound different because when you hear yourself, you hear yourself through the vibrations of the bones in your ears. When you hear yourself through headphones, you're hearing it through your eardrums. So it's not like you think you sound different. You actually sound different. So that's why. So if you're like, why do I sound like a tinny little mouse when I think I've got this sexy, booming voice? It's because you hear, you literally hear yourself differently. So start now, get perfect later. And exactly as you alluded to, a podcast is more than just a piece of audio now. So obviously through the agency, we make the, you've got this video, you're live streaming it into multiple places. Hello, if everyone's watching or listening live, um, but you're live streaming it. So you're getting that one asset. You've got the video that you could use as another asset. You've got the audio that you could use as another asset. You then get quote graphics and video clips that we create for you each week that then can go across your social media. If you wanted to take it to the next step, you could then repurpose that content. You could turn that into a blog. You could transcribe it. That blog could go onto medium and LinkedIn and articles and emails and all that kind of stuff. So there's a, exactly as you said, your week's worth of marketing can come from one long form piece of content if you have a bit of joined up thinking because so many people, and I do quite a lot of consultancy, even to people who work with other agencies that are not doing marketing assets, which is, I just think is a, is a waste of time, frankly. They're like, oh, my podcast is not getting any traction. Well, okay, cool. What's, what, what marketing do you do? Oh, I do a post about it on Facebook. Okay, cool. What else? Nothing. That's it? I'm like, okay, here is the problem then, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that's literally it. Think of it like, um, think of long form, long form content and what I call a pillar content strategy takes away all of your day to day marketing headache because most entrepreneurs woke up this morning and thought, oh, what am I going to post today? That's generally what most people think. Yeah. And it's just another thing to do, which is why you at nine o'clock at night, and I've been there and done it myself. You do the crap Instagram post for no other purpose than you can tick a box. Like, I've done a post today or you, <laughs> you know, on LinkedIn. You just reshare something that's bang average from someone because you're like, oh, at least I ticked the box. Don't do that. Make one long yeah. form piece of content, whether it be a video or, or a podcast, ideally both because you've got both assets and turn that as I say into audio, video, blogs, clips, graphics, promo assets, shorts, reels, TikToks. It can be so powerful and it just takes all of that organic marketing headache off your plate. Uh, it has me. I cannot, like, I've got Abby now, now who's doing all of, so like, I'll record this with you. And then basically she'll then download it on Twitter because we you can download the audio and then upload yep. it to Twitter. And then then basically she takes out all the bits out of that. We get all the content that you send to us, and then she literally puts loads more everywhere. And it'll be interesting to see since she's been doing that. She's only taken over from me at the, I think it was because I and again it was a time thing for me, James. It was like fitting that in with everything else. And bearing in mind, if anyone's listening to this, that Abby is only twenty three. She's not, you know, she's not like a, and she's not come from a marketing background. So yeah, like, she's not a she's career not, marketer at this point. No, like she is an a marketing apprentice. That's what she is. If you see what I mean. So she's learning as she goes. I'm bringing her. To, by the way, I'm going to bring her up to meet you, and she's really shy. So um, be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> okay when we come to it because we like i said we're going to be at emc and james is going to be at emc as well so if you want to chat to him direct then come along because um 
Actually, Matt needs to pay me for this, tell him. It does, doesn't he? <laughs> EMC2022.co.uk, get a sly <laughs> plug-in for our mutual pal, Matt. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good event, actually, especially for salons in competitive marketplaces. Yeah, Stand, standing out at the moment is so... That's why I'm so passionate about podcasts because it helps yeah. you to stand out. It really, really does. And it's it, it's an even playing field because when there's, you know, there's three or four salons in the same town, you're basically, and you've got want to go, okay, well, okay, Facebook, I want females aged 35 to 55 um, from yeah. an ABC one socio demographic from within five miles of, you know, BR one postcode area. You're all just competing for the same thing. And then obviously because of the, you know, so effectively like an auction because of the demand, the supply, cost increases whereas with a podcast you'll put this content out it's not costing other than the cost of the production you're not having to pay to advertise to put it anyway you're not having to pay to, to to play you're not having to compete with anybody else if somebody subscribes to your podcast they get it week after week after week so yeah. for, let's say these are 30 minute episodes within a month a cold lead who's maybe thinking about like taking on a salon apprentice in their business has listened to you for two hours yeah how yeah. else are you going to get them to Totally. And like you say, that's that trust bucket, isn't it? So that mm. they understand that you know what you're talking about and they can use all the things that you do to make your business successful. So yeah. for, for a salon owner, if somebody's having a real problem with a certain type of hair colour or they want that, but they don't know how to get to it, even hairdressers will listen to it. Do you know what I'm saying? So you're going to get hairdressers who could potentially come and work in your business, which is great at the moment because we're all struggling in recruitment. You're also going to get new clients because they tell people who tell people that, and one client will bring in like 10 clients if they like you. And if they like you, they'll already know they like you because they've listened to the podcast because that's what they're interested in yeah. so uh, yeah for me it's just a bit of a it's such an i i never realized the power of this until um i started with you basically mm. because i was doing it on my facebook but i needed to get off facebook i needed to go to other places if you get what i mean to be able to attract people from other places because not everyone's on facebook so you're only going into one now i'm on instagram i'm on linkedin i'm like on youtube and we're getting more and more traction because of that and more and more leads because of that. So again, yeah. just to reiterate the point I made earlier though, because what a lot of people would be go be thinking, oh, this is crazy though, because Sarah's got eight hundred salons like on yeah. Facebook. Why would you bother doing the, the podcast? Like can you convert them over there? Um, and, and and it's gonna take time to build up that audience and is it worth doing it? But it's on another platform and this platform you control. Yeah. Facebook at the click of a button can shut that group down. I've had that. Yeah. I had a group with 16,000 members in it and it got shut down by Facebook. I've my, my entire Facebook account got hacked and yeah. shut down. Yeah. I had all of my, you know, 10 years worth of all my credibility or my social proof and all the podcasts that I'd launched. I don't, I know I've done 161 podcasts. I couldn't tell you what number 89 was because I haven't got it anymore. Cause I, cause my Facebook got hacked, but this yeah. platform, you control it. And yeah. now, as I say, you're leveraging the assets and you're putting it onto different places. So that audience on Facebook, they're still going to be there. And like mm. I say, a lot of people might go, well, yeah, but aren't you going to lose some of the Facebook engagement because they might listen to the podcast? Who cares? Who yeah. cares? Because it's not about the numbers. It's about yeah. the authority that you're building, yeah. which you've, which is proving the pudding by the fact that you're getting leads that are coming through the door who have now listened yeah. to the podcast. And even more clever, when they're coming to you as cold traffic potentially, what a great sales tag. Hey, I'd love to work with you. Do you know what? Based on your, your salons challenge, listen to episode 23 about mm. um, scaling up using social audio or, or whatever it may be. Have a listen to that and then come back to me. What an and amazing takeaway from, not, from a sales perspective. And not just that. It's not just that. It's people that I already have got relationships with. Does that make sense? Like who are my salons who say to me, I'm having trouble with this. In, in my salon so for instance I'm having I've got one that's coming out conflict in the workplace because how to deal with that and how you I mean I know it's apprentices but to be honest an apprentice can be like a seven uh, what's it a 16 year old or an 80 um, not 80 probably that's a bit too old but <laughs> who are you bringing into these salons you <laughs> slave driver but 40 50 because people are changing you see i mm. think nowadays i think you know like we forget that life 
and um, you know years ago you go into a job you retire at 65 how many 65 year old people can actually retire now not very many do you know what i mean and they probably don't want to go into a into the job they were doing before for whatever reason do you know what i mean they want to change there's a lot of people there's a lot of women we're having coming in at 40 45 50 learning how to do hair and beauty now and they can do it for an apprenticeship do you know do you know what i mean so my my um podcasts people don't know that because when i speak to people i mean i bet if i said to you james how old do you think an apprentice was you'd probably I'm, think yeah 16 yeah. 16 to 21 i would have guessed i had no yeah, idea but that's what i'm trying to get at anyone can do an apprenticeship doesn't matter what age i mean we do right up to management so like we like we do a level five management apprenticeship which is all about operations all about leadership all about all of the things and it's funded through the government do you know what i mean so actually i think when people sort of like actually get to know about it they go wow and how could i not get that across to people if i did do things like this with you on the podcast do you know yeah. what i mean to be able to do that and and from a time saving perspective which i think for most salon owners is massive at the moment because a lot of salons have gone from like five staff down to three and and probably a lot of them are really struggling do you know what i mean because of that because that's an income drop but they still need to do all the other jobs, if you get what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that supply doesn't change, does it? People's expectations doesn't change, and they don't really care that you've got less staff to do it with. It's a, it's a no. really good point. And your point about the um, sort of the older demographic of apprentices, you could put that out as a Facebook post, you could put that as a post on LinkedIn, and yeah. it, you know, it, if it doesn't stop the scroll, then you've missed the opportunity to educate people about that. Whereas if you do a half an hour episode on more senior apprentices or apprenticeships mm. at different levels. Did you, you know, uh, management level apprenticeships? Huh? I didn't know that was a thing. Now yeah. you've got 30 minutes to educate people. And again, what's it doing? Expert authority building that it gets shared around more than it would on like yeah. a Facebook post or a LinkedIn post. Have you heard that podcast from, do you know, we could actually, you know, we, I know that we've been looking at yeah. uh, uh, Bob for that management position in the salon. He's been here for years and done fantastic. We can actually put him on an apprenticeship for that. Like yeah. now you can really educate people, a deep level of education. And like I say, you get into them at times where you're not getting to other forms of media, can't distract people. They're in the car, so they shouldn't be on their phone. Fingers crossed, touch wood. If you're in the <laughs> car on your phone, you're a terrible person. They're cooking the dinner. They're secondary listening, but suddenly yeah. they'll be like, hang on a that, second. That, I want to listen oh, to that. I want I've got to listen totally. to that. Listen back yeah. to it again, maybe like full, full concentration. I could put, hang on a second, government funded. One of my amazing team has been with me for years. I don't really know how to do the career, career progression thing because I've, I'm a bit scared of having to fund it myself. I can get the government to pay for that. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Power. Totally. Yeah. And for me, I like, because I'm sort of like, like, got several business two or three businesses now like, that are really like beginning to like what's it get some traction so i'm looking at all different three i haven't got loads of time to sit and do my marketing every time day do you know what i mean because i and also uh, it's like one of those jobs that is an extra job to do whereas if i can do yeah. this which i love do you know what i mean like, this is uh, talking to people getting information out of people like you and taking your time that's another good thing james see i get a one-to-one -one with you for what's it oh we're nearly 40 minutes so we've gone over so i hope that i haven't taken any time i'm getting all of this information yeah for yeah me well, do you know what I mean? That I haven't thought of, and it, all those little ideas come into your mind. And I think most salon owners are entrepreneurs because that, yeah. that's why they're in the business. Do you know what I mean? They need to have that information. So, going back to what I was saying, so if people want to get in touch with your your um your business because it's it's uh, pronounce it properly for me because is it phonic? Yeah, phonic. Yeah, that's who they. So it's P H, isn't it? Oh, yeah. right, okay. And I see P H O N I C. Totally, because uh, how would they get in touch with you and get get you know get themselves started and find out about this? Um, so you can just go to our website, phonic.media, phonic.media, um, or click the link in the show notes because I'll make sure that editor Sam, who's definitely going to be hitting me up for a pay rise, is going to put a link in there and you can go through to our website or you can find me on Instagram or if you've listened to this chat somewhere, you know, I'm sure you can tag me in the videos and that and just you know, pop me a question. But yeah, phonic.media is the best place to come and hunt us down, but click the link in the show notes and you can find out more and you can find out more about senior apprentice i'm i'm staggered about the managerial apprenticeship thing you've blown my mind yeah and, I, and, I, and there's team leading as well at level three so you've got literally so like from and that you know 
James just put it out there. We do it for it isn't just for salons. We do it for everybody. But obviously that's our. Right, get me a load of them. Get me. <laughs> I want a line of them outside Ilford High Street. By the time we finish this conversation, get me a manager. Get me a. I don't know. Get me everyone. You can get even a customer service specialist. You can need do one. Marketing. I need one. Can... <laughs> marketing. One. I'll take Sorry. one. <laughs> but that's what I'm trying to get at. They're, that that is that they're all out there, and and I think it's just I know so. But people don't know where to go, and that's the problem. They don't know how to do it. They don't have to start, and they don't know who who can help them do it. So that's what I do. So thanks, James, for your time today. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for having and, me on. I've loved it. Uh, Oh, and I've loved it too. It's been really good. So, um, if it, like I said, James has just told you. Um, so a couple of learns from this when you go off this. Remember that um, EMC. Okay, if they want to get to EMC, what have they got to do? Basically, what would you suggest? I'll just just go to the website. So, gal, I'll, I'll get Sam to put a link in the show notes. EMC twenty twenty two dot co dot uk. And it yeah. really is. It's three days, and like I've got no affiliation to it other than Matt's my mate, and I want to see it do well. But there'll be yeah. a thousand other entrepreneurs there, amazing yeah. speakers. Stephen Bartlett's headline it. Karen Brady, uh, Billy Jean is marketing. Lisa Johnson. There's about thirty of us speaking who are all like experts who are making them their living doing the thing that they're talking about, not just good speakers. Um, uh, yeah, networking party. But yeah, go to the click again. Click the link in the show notes, and we'll bounce you out to emc2022.co.uk. So this is the Entrepreneur Marketing Conference and it's in um, the O2. I'll be there, by the way, everybody. So, yes. <laughs> Meet, so we, should have like a, we should have like a meet-up. We, we should have an apprenticeship godmother meet-up. Yeah, definitely. And definitely. meet-up. <laughs> sounds like good. That sounds like a party. <laughs> well, it will be. We'll, we'll, we'll repurpose a party for, for your party, for a podcast party. Salon owners love a party. I can honestly tell you. I've heard that. I know. I know a few. I know a few. Ask yeah, Jennifer like Louise. Ask Jennifer Louise. She loves a party. So. Okay, that's cool. Thank you very much, um, Matt. Um, Matt, I was going to call you Matt then. Sorry, Jane. So good, you forgot my name. Fantastic. What an a show, guys. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> That is anything, but thank you. Um, and so, like I said, he's giving you all the details. Get a hold of him. And also, the other second is look, look, um, James up because I love doing my podcast, and I know that I love to talk, and I know Salon owners do. So, thanks very much. Cheers, James. Thanks for having me. You are welcome.